Hi, it's Diederik Elderman here. Welcome to my laundry and welcome to my rescue cat, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth has got toxoplasmosis. We re rescued her a few years ago. She's been reasonably uh, good up to now. There's been some waxing, waning disease. I did some blood tests. Uh, she's really gone downhill in the last month or so. And I did some blood tests and she has toxoplasmosis. So what we're gonna do in a minute is go outside and we're going to talk about toxo but i had we had to come in here to uh, say and meet say hello to and meet elizabeth because she uh, doesn't like it outside she's a, a very um introverted uh, puss cat she's lovely but she's very introverted but you can see how scudgy she looks she's very thin she only weighs a couple of kilos look at the hair coat um, she's a little bit dehydrated but this is all toxo so you've met elizabeth elizabeth doesn't like well, she only likes being in her little secluded area. So we've put her back and we've come outside to talk about to toxoplasmosis in cats and in, in humans. So toxo is a disease uh, caused by an infection with a little organism called Toxoplasma gondii. This is a microscopic single cell protozoa. Uh, it's related to coccidia, if you happen to know what coccidia are. Virtually every or all warm-blooded animals, including people of course, uh, can be infected with, with toxo. And it's, ex it's a very well adapted parasite, but it rarely cause, causes significant disease in the individual's people, dog, cats, etc., etc., that it infects. So uh, to cause issues is unusual, and that's why it's such a nasty little critter. So how common is toxo in cats? Toxo occurs wo worldwide, and infection in cat also occurs worldwide, and it's very widespread. Many more cats are infected than actually show symptoms. Infection rates are higher in free-roaming, feral, stray cats. In contrast, Infection is uncommon in pet cats um, that, uh, that, that, that don't get outside, that don't do hunting, and are fed primarily or exclusively on commercial cat foods. And that's the big thing. Uh, if your cat is fed commercial cat food and is kept inside and always has been kept inside, uh, he or she can't really get toxo. But if she eats fresh meat or gets outside, then he or she is very likely to pick up toxo. So how is toxo transmitted? Cats are usually infected by ingesting the organism uh, that is present in the meat of other infected animals, animals, uh, especially red meat, i.e. beef, um, uh, kangaroos, things like that. Now, uh, and rodents, of course, you know, uh, mice, uh, rats, those sorts of things. Now, the toxo organism replicates or, or, or divides, multiplies, first of all, in, in the gut of the infected cat, uh, and, and it usually re remains there. And then what happens is that cat will shed what are called oocytes or, or baby toxo in the feces. And, and as you know, cats, when they're outside, will bury their feces in gardens. And that's how a lot of humans pick it up by digging in the gardens, not wearing gloves. So. This oocyte that lives in the dirt is very, very, very hardy. It can survive frost, it can survive heat, it can survive dry, it can survive wet for months and months and months or even years and years. Other animals um, then become infected by ingesting or eating the those oocysts or oocytes. Uh, but the people that and the animals that, that get the oocytes will only get disease if they ingest a, a large number. In some cats, especially if their immune defenses are down, and that's typically cats with AIDS or cats with, with leukemia or that are compromised with cancer or something like that, the toxo organisms can get out of the intestine and in, invade various organs, or organs inside the body. And in though they then cause uh, signs of uh, disease or so that the the the, the oocyst can then cause disease or the oocyst can become go to a hibernated form like a bear in winter and wake up when that animal's immune system is compromised so your cat can be carrying toxo in muscle in liver have absolutely no clinical signs uh, immune system gets compromised 
and then the toxo you know wakes up and and causes active disease so uh, the 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 cysts in the muscle and liver of a cat are different to the other cysts uh, or other sites that are found uh, on the ground or in the garden um, if and this sounds terrible but if you're cat was a wild cat for example or let's talk about wild cats when that wild cat with the cysts in the muscle and the liver is eaten by another predator then that predator gets um, infected um, uh, by eating that that cat now what diseases does toxo cause in cats uh, toxo is a relatively common infection and it usually causes no disease at all in infected cats as i said uh, a couple of seconds ago however if that cat's immune system becomes compromised if it's not working properly then the toxo organisms can can wake up um, and can spread and cause all sorts of uh, damage to tissues and there's lots of there's a huge variety of, of clinical signs that can develop in the cat the most common one that we see is is in the eye we see eye disease uh, and, and that's often quite easy to pick it's it's also um, it can also cause respiratory disease uh, diarrhea uh, liver disease and neurological signs now the disease may be acute and get really savage really fast or it can be really chronic low grade and and just be there forever and and um, in the last two months i've seen four cats with toxo including uh, my uh, Elizabeth and in those cats it's been a, a a chronic disease in quite a number of those cases I was a second or a third a, a opinion and those cats had just been not well the blood tests have been relatively normal and um, yeah I guess I was lucky enough to think a bit laterally and and to pick it up now the other thing with these cats is they'll have periods of being really well with per cat periods of being uh, not 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 so well so up and down up and down waxing and and waning now that being said it is rare and that's why i'm doing this video today because i've seen four cases in like two months and, and everyone has uh, successfully survived as well but the treatment is a month's worth of uh, uh, antibiotics and it's a fairly big nasty tablet so how do we diagnose and how do we treat toxo toxo is difficult to diagnose because the signs can be so variable you've got to think uh, laterally enough to to run those specific blood tests they do not show up on any old blood tests you've got to run very specific toxo teeters that's the only way uh, to run it and you've actually got to run a two different tests that show you that show up long-term infection and also acute infection i won't go into that that's a little bit too much beyond the scope of this video um, so those uh, tests show up antibodies uh, to, to, to the organism. Now, the problem with the test is if your cat's been exposed in your past, in the past, your cat will have a positive teeter. And if your cat's exposed now, you'll also have a positive teeter. So you've got to do two different tests to tell apart a previous infection to a, a current infection. Now, the treatment is, is a month worth of antibiotics like i said a big capsule uh, hard to give i know elizabeth hates me when i come in every morning so how important is toxo to people let's uh, go down that road as with uh, toxo infections in cats the majority uh, of people infected with toxo don't show any clinical disease so they've done so, so if you've been exposed to a disease you'll have what's called a positive teeter to a disease and they've done plenty of studies in in young adults uh, teenagers and so they'll measure their toxo teeters in these tests they measure them at say eight nine ten years of age and then they measure these same people again at 18 19 20 and their teeters were negative or most of them had negative teeters at eight nine ten and most of them had positive teeters at uh, 18 19 20 but most of these people had never been to the to their doctor and been diagnosed with toxo in that period of time so in other words they had not contacted the disease down here they had contacted up here and become resistant so somewhere in that 10 year time frame they'd contact the disease maybe been off color for a day or two gotten over it and uh, th 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 that was it now there are some individuals however who 
do get significant disease and the person in whom that is most important is the pregnant woman. If a pregnant woman gets toxo during the pregnancy, the infection may be transmitted to, to the baby, to the fetus in, in utero, and it can be horrendously damaging to that fetus. Now, this is only important if the woman gets toxo infection during the pregnancy. During the pregnancy. A woman who's been exposed previously uh, doesn't have any risk of transmitting the disease uh, to the fetus um, once she becomes pregnant. So it's important to understand that. Now, how do people get toxo? Well, cats are usually infected by eating infected rodents or red fresh meat, raw meat. Um, and, and so that's where they get the oocysts from, from the environment or from um, fresh meat. Humans are most commonly infected through eating contaminated food as well. Um, and the contaminated food includes sheep, uh, cattle, um, pigs that are, gr are grazing on in infected pasture or other food that's contaminated by oocysts. And these oocysts can... Um, uh, I'll give you an example. So a, a lady could be digging in a garden um, and uh, the a cat's defecated there. There is uh, oasis on, in the garden. She gets them on her hands, happens to touch her, her face and ingest the oasis. That's how it can happen. Uh, a lady can also get um, oasis from cutting up red raw meat with her bare hands and and those are two things a pregnant woman should obviously not do and please uh, I'm not a medical person I'm a veterinarian take this with a grain of salt legal disclaimer etc etc you need to talk to your doctor if you've got any questions along that line I'm just giving you a general non-specific uh, uh, opinion from my my point of view so humans can become um, uh, in infected that way most commonly also cleaning out litter boxes obviously uh, so they're the they're the main ways um, you know with with people gardening litter boxes uh, cutting up fresh meat now how can human infections be avoided cats are part of a very complex life cycle of, of toxins it's got a very complex life cycle um, numerous surveys have shown that people who own cats themselves are not at a higher risk than the rest of the population. And this is a, a, a myth. Uh, so, so there's a big myth that if you own a cat, you're more likely to get toxo. All the studies show that that is absolute rubbish. You are not more likely to catch toxo um, if you've got a cat than if you haven't got a cat. So that's really important. Now, there are se several reasons for this. Many cat owners or many uh, pet cats um, will never be exposed to toxo and therefore they don't have it and they can't pass it on to humans. So they'll shed oasis for about 10 days uh, after they've been initially exposed. After that, they don't shed anymore. Uh, and although humans may become infected through exposure to an ingestion of oasis from the environment, like from the garden, a much more common uh, source of infection for people is uh, infected meat. So there's a couple of suggestions now on how to prevent toxo. So cook all your meat thoroughly at least uh, 70 to 82 degrees Celsius. Wash your hands, wash your cooking utensils, wash your, surf uh, your uh, surfaces really carefully before and after handling raw meat. Wash all fruits and veggies really carefully. Wear gloves when, when gardening out in the soil. Um, where or, or handling anything where there's potential cat feces contamination. Empty cat litter daily, disposing of the litter carefully, not where you're going to come in contact with it later on. And obviously wash the litter trays and everything really thoroughly as well with, with really boiling hot water. Uh, a couple of other things. Pregnant women should refrain from cleaning litter trays. Um, if this is not possible, then wear gloves at least and uh, thoroughly wash hands afterwards. Um, lock your cat inside so they can't uh, hunt and therefore they're less likely to pick up uh, rats and mice which are the, the, have much higher levels of, of toxo. And um, don't feed cats raw or undercooked meat. Feed them commercial uh, cat 
dry or canned food or, um, you know, don't even use the commercial cat fresh meat sachets or trays, they have the same risk uh, of toxo as do, does you cutting up a, um, a, a leg of pork, for, for example. And then the other thing is cover all the sandboxes, your kids' sandboxes that you have, so your cats can't use that as litter trays. So I hope you've learned a little bit about toxo. I hope your cat isn't one who is going to come come down with it. If you've got a cat that's got a waxing, waning disease that's been going on for a while, no one's yet been able to put uh, his or her finger on exactly what's causing your cat's um, problems, look, come in and see me or, or go back to your vet and um, consider talking to them about Toxo. I'll see you in the next video.